Thank you. I'd like to thank the organizers and uh, Heather in particular um, for the invitation to be here. I'm very privileged to be here. Thank you. And I wanted just to say as an introduction that I'm not uh, a surgeon. So the, the pictures that follow of a particular patient that was at Breakspear yesterday um, are not to depict any sort of surgical treatment, but um, will help you to see that we do have to think eclectically in medicine. And so um, this, was, this was this patient yesterday um, who had got slightly puffy circles round her eyes. And uh, so she was um, offered an opportunity to have some treatment with um, some uh, things, some tape called Cure Tape. Um, so that was it as it was applied. And uh, this it was it in application. Uh, you'll see that it was being applied extensively. <laughs> um, and uh, the purpose of this was really to reduce lymphedema. And you can see there it being applied, and that was the result after um, a few, after four hours. Uh, there was quite a lot of reduction in edema around that left eye. Um, I mean, I'm de I dare say that others here might be able to address some of these other problems, but certainly, just for your interest, there is a medical treatment, which is with a su substance called Cure Tape, which acts as a signaling uh, um, messenger uh, application, which can be just put onto the skin. It will reduce edema within a very short time. And it actually, we use it for pain, to relieve pain, and we re use it to re uh, relieve um, inflammation. So I just thought that would be a, a brief introduction to one of the patients that we have. So um, these, my, my talk, though, is to do with depollution. But before you can consider depollution, you have to consider pollution facts. And we consider air, food, and water. We consider medicines to be pollutants, implants, indoor and outdoor pollution we have to consider. Pollution effects will vary depending on individual responses, and we've been already told that about uh, the different genetic structures will deal with things differently. But we need to assess some of the principal pollutants, and I have, will outline some of the very simple ways in which we can do this, and how we can depollute people, and some of the advice for avoidance for further, uh, uh, further consequences. So this phrase is probably well, this, um, pa these paragraphs are probably well known to many of you. Uh, this is from Rachel Carson's Silent Spring back in 1965. She was saying, and then a strange blight crept over the area and everything began to change. Some evil spell had settled on the community. Mysterious maladies swept the flocks of chickens. The cattle and sheep sickened and died. Recognize this? No witchcraft, no enemy action had silenced the rebirth of new life in this stricken world. The people had done it to themselves. The control of nature is a phrase conceived in arrogance born of a Neanderthal age of biology and philosophy when it was supposed that nature exists for the convenience of man. It's our alarming misfortune that so primitive a science has armed itself with the most modern and terrible weapons and that in turning them against the insects, it's also turned them against the earth. So we have to think what we are doing to air currents in country, town, industrial settings, the first world, the third world. And we have to start with food. Because although there are naturally occurring toxicants in food, for, um, we have to consider what we're doing in the way of food processing, additives, colorings, preservatives, flavorings, the wrappings, the phthalates. 
And I want to emphasize that organically grown food compared with commercially produced food is far better. The average elemental concentration of organic food, inorganic foods on a fresh weight basis was about twice that of commercial foods. So why should we eat things which are weak when we ourselves wish to be strong? American researchers have found that organically grown kiwis had significantly higher levels of vitamin C and polyphenols. Um, and uh, organic compound, uh, foods have 17% more poly polyphenols and they have 14% more vitamin C, greater concentrations of several important min minerals such as potassium and calcium. And that was in March 2007. But in fact, there's continuing information about this all the time. And we've, we researched from McCants and Widdersons, which is the chemical composition of food from the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Foods in 1960 and compared this with the next ones in, 60, in 76 and 91. And you can see that compared the, the, the two groups compared between the 40s and 1991, carrots have 75% less magnesium, 48% less calcium. I won't go through the whole of this chart, but you can see that all of them are emphasized here as being less when they're commercially grown. Again, all meats... 41% less calcium, 54% less iron, and fruits, 27% zinc less. Um, so if one's considering quality, you have to ensure, if possible, organically grown is best. Again, lycopene, which is uh, one of the antioxidants that we, we require from... For, for protection of the prostate, the eyes, so on. Um, they looked at different brands of tomato ketchup, found that of the organic ones, they had three times more lycopene in them than the others. So then that's food, just as a broad guideline that we need to look at the quality of the food, apart from what's also in it as an additive. With regard to water, Mercury and pollutants in the food chain and pollutants in the water we have to think of. Um, the pollutants in the food chain have been found to affect polar bears. Now, these big mammals depend on, on getting fish uh, and uh, they are not eat, consuming um, any... Uh, herbivorous material. So this is entirely a product of the end of the food chain. And they are now, a, a large number of them are now hermaphrodite. About 15 years ago, it was only 4%. It's a much higher percentage now. Um, and of those who've been able to be studied, um, the pollutants in the water have been affecting coral reefs and killing them. Mercury, we, all, we know, is accumulating in the food chain and in many of the large fish, they're so contaminated with mercury that I don't recommend that they're consumed by my patients. Now drugs, these actually are also pollutants because they have to be degraded by the enzyme systems in the liver. Some of us are, have difficulty in doing this 